On this episode of Paint Society, this is the complete color change guide that you need to know in order to paint your car. We're gonna take this old Honda Civic and turn it into a show-stopping paint job. We're gonna take you through the whole complete color change process from primer, we're gonna take you into cut-ins and how to jam properly, to getting everything back onto the vehicle, sanding and prepping that down for its final spray job. You're gonna learn a lot, so let's go ahead and get started. The start of this project started with Bodhi Vision, making sure that any of the rusted out areas were completely fixed. And we also did some custom modifications to some open holes that Bodhi was able to go ahead and weld shut. He then finished everything up with an epoxy primer. Once it was epoxy primered, that's where we took over this job. Step one, primer application. In this step, we have completely sanded down the original epoxy primer finish. It's very important to give that finish at least one week to scuff down. We've scuffed it down with a 320 grit and we will be applying a 2K urethane surfacer primer. This surfacer primer is going to give us the build that we need to smooth things out. Here we're using the Eastwood 2K urethane surfacer primer and it mixes up four to one. I found just a little bit of reducer helps to help it come out of the gun a little bit smoother. Once it's all mixed up, we're going to apply two to three coats or until you get the maximum build that you need. Keep in mind, allowing at least 10 minutes in between coats is a good practice when spraying primer. This will allow the prior coats to first initially dry so you can build on top of those. When performing a primer application, make sure you go to edge to edge when applying primer. It's very important to use the right fluid tip. So here we're using a 1.8, but you can also use a 2.0 if it's struggling to come out of the spray gun. The hood here has a black primer from the factory, and we're gonna go ahead and just apply a primer over this factory primer. All panels have been previously sanded with a P320 grit, and that is a good grit for adhesion. You don't want to sand too coarse because then you'll see sand scratches. Once the primer has been applied to the vehicle, it's always a great idea to allow the primer to sit for at least 24 to 48 hours. If you allow it to sit a little bit longer, then this will help the shrinkage. And what shrinkage is, is all of the primer will eventually shrink into the sand scratch of the sandpaper that you used initially. By allowing it to properly shrink, we can ensure that later down the road, once the paint job has been completed, we won't see any shrinking or swelling of the paint job. This is such an important step in the process of the primer, so make sure you do not rush it. If you have any areas that were down to bare metal once you've sanded the epoxy, you can go ahead and take some self-etching primer out of a can and always hit those spots up first before applying the 2K urethane primer. Step two, prepping the cut-ins, also known as the jams. When painting a car based off your ability, it might be a best idea to paint the car all at once so that the color completely matches. If this is the case, then it's best to first initially prep and spray all the parts that you will not be able to spray once the car is assembled. This includes on the fenders, inside of the jam, and inside of the engine bay. We're going to be using a P400, and then we'll finish it up with a P600 so that the paint has a nice surface to lay on. We're going to be sanding at least three to four inches past the initial area where we're initially going to spray our paint. We always want our paint to land on a sanded surface rather than an unsanded primer surface. So make sure you take the necessary time in order to smooth out the areas where the overspray will lie. 
when doing a cut-in, it's very important that you take the time also to prep the cut-in properly. Cut-in areas usually are not the easiest to sand, so you can use a combination of maroon scuff pads, gray scuff pads, or fold over the paper in order to get into the areas that are hard to reach. I like to always start with the cut-ins on a spray job because this is a good practice for my color and getting things down pat before the actual vehicle is sprayed. You can see here on the hood, we're sanding around two to three inches on the front side of the hood because when we spray the back side of the hood, we want to make sure that any of the overspray that catches the edge and folds over to the top side lands on nice smooth paint. If you don't do this, this can cause adhesion issues in the future. Make sure you take the time to properly prep all of your parts. Step three, applying the cut in paint to the jam. And since this vehicle will be painted all together, since it is a quad stage paint job with a ground coat, we want to make sure that we cut in the parts and then put them back on the vehicle. If this was an easier paint job, like a solid color, then most likely you could just paint everything off the car. But for this particular case, since it is a complex color, you want all panels lined up on the vehicle to make sure you have the same exact match. So a cut-in basically is removing all the components of the door and spraying the inside of the jams and then placing it back on the vehicle. Now, this is not primed like the rest of the vehicle, but we're gonna be using a sealer. We'll go ahead and seal everything in because we didn't use the primer. And then from there, we can start with our ground coat, our uh, mid coat and our top coat. You can see we have all the panels lined out here. And we're also gonna be spraying the inside edge of the fender here, because remember when the vehicle is put back together, the only part that's gonna be accessible really is the top of the fender, not the inside. So we'll be cutting in the edge of the fender and we'll also be cutting in the inner edge of the fender where it meets the door. And these portions will be taped off when it comes to painting the actual vehicle. Now to get everything clean, I'm gonna be using a pre-painting prep. It's basically a solvent cleaner. And I really like these paper towel microfibers because they tear off easily. You can see how they're completely perforated. So they completely just tear right off. And so it's a clean, nice absorbent microfiber towel. So basically the process is very easy. You just spray and you wipe it off. Now you really need to analyze all the parts on the vehicle and what will show and what will not because you do not want to tape something off that you need paint on. You can see that this car was red or is red at the particular moment and it will remain red. However, it's gonna change color to gray first. And a lot of these areas that get paint when a door is open, you really need to make sure that you know exactly where they're at so that you can put paint down. So when the vehicle is all done and your doors are open, you don't see any of the old red paint or any of the gray sealer or undercoating that you're gonna be placing on. And once you have everything completely cleaned off, go ahead and give it a good 10 or 20 minutes to really just let it air out. Sometimes the cleaners can go into crevices that you just don't see or you just can't wipe. And you really wanna make sure that that has time to dry because it can be a headache if you go to paint over something that is still wet, okay? So make sure you give enough time when you're doing any sort of spray job, especially a complex one like this. We're now ready to apply the sealer. For this particular product, we're using Eastwood's epoxy primer. So once it's mixed up properly, just add 20% reducer to the mix. Now there's other different types of sealers on the market that you can use as well. But when you go to pick a sealer, make sure you're picking a 2K sealer. What a 2K sealer means is it's a two part, meaning it has an activator. An activator will lock down the paint and make sure everything it dries properly and cures properly so you have a long lasting repair. Usually with sealer, it coats in just one coat and you are covered. If you don't want to seal, you also do have another option of fully primering like you saw in the first steps. The only downside to this is that you will have to once again sand down the primer. Sealer is meant to be painted over without necessarily long dry times 
or sanding. Once again, if you don't feel comfortable sealing, you can definitely primer, and then from there, you can sand the primer down and just go into this next stage. Now, not all paints will require a ground coat, but paints like red, colors like red, blue, yellow, those colors require usually in any system a ground coat. And since we're using the OEM Select paint by Eastwood, this particular paint system requires an undercoat. And this undercoat 100% needs to be on every single panel before you apply the base. Now this is the color for the specific Mazda color that we're putting on this particular vehicle. Not all colors will come with the undercoat of this color depending on the actual color itself and if it requires the undercoat at all. Now after about just 15, 20 minutes of that sealer, it's dry, it's about 100 degrees in the spray booth so it dries pretty quick. And we're gonna go ahead and lay this down. This is just like ground coat, it's not a sealer. It's a base coat basically, so it's a lot easier to spray than any sealer. You don't have to worry about dust or anything like that. We're gonna use the same spray gun and get this laid down. When it comes to spraying a ground coat, it's very important to remember that this is not a sealer coat. A sealer is completely different from a ground coat because a ground coat is a base coat. The formulas and the mixtures are completely different. A base coat is mixed up with reducer, whereas sealers and primers are mixed up with activators and hardeners. For the ground coat, I'm using a 1.2 or 1.3, which will work perfect for your use. A 1.2 might get you less paint, but it will dry quicker. Luckily for us, it covered very well in just one coat. It's very important to make sure you have complete coverage when spraying your ground coat. If you don't get complete coverage with your ground coat and you apply the next coating, then you might find spots, modeling, or other paint issues when the job is done. Make sure you take enough time to get full coverage. If you need to apply two coats, wait 10 minutes in between coats. First coat down, covered pretty well. We're gonna allow this to dry a good uh, 15 minutes. You can see it's flashing off. Flashing off means it's kind of smooth looking, matte looking. And I like that it laid down smooth. It's very important for a nice spray job that your coats are laying down smooth. If they're not, then bust out the 600 grit and lightly scuff it because you wanna make sure that the top coats after this are nice and smooth. We can see we did our cut-ins here and we're gonna be overlaying color two to three inches past where we're spraying. And then when it comes time to, time to put this back on the vehicle, we'll just scuff this up. Same thing over here. See how we're putting it two or three inches past. The other panels are getting full coverage. And then we'll start with our next coat. And the paint we're gonna be using is one of the toughest colors, 46V. We're gonna test out the OEM Select paint. This is the mid coat and then it has a top coat. It is a beautiful metallic pearl and we can see how nice that color is and we're going to go apply this right now to all of our cut in parts and we're going to be using the Segola. We have the aqua cap, the DVR aqua cap so we can apply it pretty quick and get it to lay down nice. We're now ready to spray our base coat. Now the one thing I love about spraying a base coat over a ground coat is how uniformly it lays down. So if we had not put down this ground coat initially, then we would have a lot of areas where our breakthroughs were that were see-through-ish, and we would have to do many coats in order just to get coverage over those lighter areas. Now, one thing I do want to really stress to you all is that your jammed areas, since they're smaller, they're contoured, they are gonna cover much quicker rather than let's say a hood or a door or a fender quarter panel, that type of thing. The reason why you have to be careful is because you're not gonna get the full coverage in your door jam if you're just looking at it and saying it's covered. You need to do a spray out card to see what the amount of full coverage would be. In this case, it's about three to four coats and just two coats on the jams it appears to be covered because there's no see-through areas. However, it is not the true color because we don't have true coverage. 
So make sure you take that into account, especially if you're doing any sort of candy job or anything with a metallic, that more coats you put on will get darker. You wanna make sure that they're the same so the outside of the body of the vehicle matches the doors when you open them. And now we put down three coats of our base and it's got great coverage. I really love the way that this color looks over that black ground coat. It just gives it that nice, deep, rich red uh, that we're used to on that 46V. So now we're gonna apply that top coat. It's gonna be like a translucent red. And check this out, guys. It's like a bloody red. Remember, this is a OEM color. Comes on the Mazdas. I just love that. It's translucent. I think we're gonna put two coats on. Uh, since we're doing a, com a complete paint job, we make the rules here with the mid coat. If we were trying to match something, then we would have to do spray outs and such. But let's go ahead and get this loaded into the gun and let's lay down two coats, about 10 minutes in between coats. Now for this particular top coat that is tinted, you only have to really apply two to three coats if you're doing an all over spray job. Now for our case, I like the way it looked just after two coats, but keep in mind, if you're purchasing this paint to match something, you're going to need to do a spray out card ahead of time to see how many coats you'll need to appropriately cover. Once again, when spraying this, you want to spray it as even as possible. If you spray too much in one area, you might get a darker area than you would on the rest of the panel. So make sure you're overlapping in and around 75% and get a nice even stroke. And after that, two coats of mid, it's really got a deep red look, even deeper than it was with the base. Now you're gonna wanna give this a good 20 to 25 minutes, let it, all the solvents come out of the paint. We got sealer, we've got ground coat, we've got base coat, we've got top coat, mid coat. We got a lot of solvent. Now since the start of this project with the sealer till now, I've allowed two hours time, working time. So make sure you have enough time in the booth to really allow this to dry out. I'm giving about maybe 15 minutes between every coat. I don't want any solvent pop when it comes to clear coat, which we're gonna apply right now. And the clear that we're gonna be using is a four to one show car clear coat. Now we're really testing out those Eastwood products to see if they hold up. And this is gonna be a good test with the clear. Will it die back? Will it hold its gloss? Will it have enough body to it? So it says it's a show clear. Uh, it's a four to one, so it's gonna be a little bit thicker. We're gonna go ahead and mix it up and start applying two coats with about 15 minutes in between our coats. It's now time to apply that clear coat to the inside of our jams. And this is great practice for when the time comes to actually spray the jams on a vehicle and to actually spray the vehicle as it is. Now we're gonna be running two coats of clear coat, but my best advice to you guys is on that first coat, you don't have to go full wet. The reason being there's a lot of curves and a lot of areas where the paint can get hung up and even roll off a body edge and just drip so you wanna make sure that that first coat is medium wet, not full wet. If you full wet it, it might just slide right off of the base coat and we don't want that. So on this first coat, just get the clear coat on and then on the second coat about 10 minutes later, you can put it on a little bit wetter. Now on the flat panels like the inside of the hood, those panels you can go a little bit wetter on because they're gonna take a little bit more material to flow out. You always wanna make sure when that hood is popped, if you're looking for that show car look, that it is completely flat or as flat as you can get it. Now, when you're applying a flat hood like this, make sure that you're moving just a little bit slower. On the jams and other areas, you can move a little bit faster, remembering to overlap at least two to three inches past the area in which you're painting. With the doors all completed and dry, as well as the underside of the hood. It's now time to start the cut-in on the actual vehicle. Now the cut-in or the jam is painting the parts on the vehicle that cannot be painted once everything's assembled. Once again, on this particular vehicle, we're gonna be painting the whole car together because it's a very complex color and we don't wanna risk panels not matching up if painted separately. 
So it's always going to be best on your complex colors, especially this one, to paint everything together. Now to do our cut-in, everything is prepared with a 400 grit completely and completely taped off as well. We'll be taking the paint as far as it was at the OEM and we will be completing the cut-in about three or four inches past the door jam. Now one thing I did do is I went around all of the perimeter of where we're going to be doing the cut-in and I've sanded that also with the 400 grit as well just to make sure that any paint does lay on 400 crit scratch. And the gas cap area will receive a cut in because we'll put the gas cover back on when it comes time to paint. For this particular vehicle, we're gonna paint the rear pan, make sure it all looks good, as well as the areas around the tailgate. We wanna ensure that this area is all matching when we go to put the tailgate back on and the glass. We'll carry it around to the front area of the passenger side and we'll perform the same exact cut in. Let's go ahead and get started with our sealer, our ground coat, our base coat, our mid coat, and the clear coat. Here it is guys, we knocked down two coats of clear. Check it out, beautiful gloss all the way inside. These are the details that I really love on a vehicle when it's completely colored all the way to the edge. There's no paint on any of the seals, everything's removed. So at this point now, we're gonna allow this to completely dry and then the guys will get everything back together on the vehicle. And then from there, we can treat it like a regular spray job. And I'll be showing you the different techniques that you can do 
for taping up your door jams so that you don't get the overspray inside or anywhere else. So right now the car is officially jammed out and it's ready to get reassembled. Step four, preparing the primer for paint. Once the vehicle is all back together, it's time to get everything prepared for paint. You'll see that the overspray has gone about four to five inches past the primered area. Now in this case, what we want to do is get everything completely initially sanded down with a 400 grit. This will help really knock it down smooth once again. Now in this case, we are not going to be sealing the vehicle, so I recommend finishing it up with a P600 grit. Make sure to check the description, find links of all of the materials we're using. We're using Eagle of Braves' P400 grit and P600. It really cuts it down nice. I also recommend, if you didn't already, washing down the vehicle before it hits the booth. Step 5. Masking the vehicle for paint. Once we get the car back in the booth, we have Mario from Mario's Paint Class giving us a hand today, and the owner, John. We're going to go ahead and get it cleaned up. Now, remember how we talked about the cut-ins, and some people thought that that could possibly be an issue? But we're going to show you how we handle it. First off, we're going to clean up all of our marks from primer sanding, and then we're going to go ahead and make sure that we get everything completely masked off. So now we're going over the process of how to mask the jams. Now, every vehicle will be a little bit different based off how the body lines orientate inside a door jam. But basically, we're lucky here because we're going to do something that we most commonly don't do. We're not going to do soft edge. I'm going to run a fine line uh, tape blue vinyl right in this corner so you're never going to see the transition. So anyone that's worried about overspray or anything like that, you're not going to have to worry about it because you're going to tuck it right in the middle. Now, the best thing about this is since this does not have the rubber uh, seals in yet, the door will actually go in much further. So check that out. We'll be able to get that leading edge and cover it again with our color as we pass by on the quarter panel on the door. And this way we make sure that we have the same exact color all the way through and we don't have to worry about any mismatching if we're painting it separately. Now we'll apply our blue vinyl tape and tuck it right into the corner here. Now we don't have to worry about any overspray or any fuzzy line because the paint will come right up to this edge and we'll pull it off after we're all done, it's curing and you won't see any sort of transition. And now the door jam has all been taped up along with the door shell, even into the panel where it meets the fender. So none of that overspray will get where we don't want it to. And when paper meets paper, there's no overspray. And we still can get the inside access of that door jam on the quarter panel. We also tape the inside of the door once we remove the fender just to ensure a nicer clean paint job and once again no overspray where we don't want it to be. On the top side of the door the tape is back mass. This technique will leave a soft edge right underneath our door jam area on our A, B and C pillar. Inside the vehicle Mario is back masking on the inside of the vehicle so that we can lay down their paper on top of it. On the inside of the engine bay, underneath the hood, we use a 36 inch paper followed by 18 inch. We did 18 inch on both sides, keeping the overspray off. Now over here, where we've cleared, we're gonna use a soft edge foam tape. You can use a foam tape, or you can even use a back mass tape, or even a tape that's folded on itself, just so it creates a soft edge right here at the corner uh, the fender and this is what it should look like so what i did is i put a piece of tape over it because sometimes the foam tape can fall so i put the foam tape right at the edge here and then i put the uh, masking tape right over that and remember when you have masking and paper on paper that creates a nice seal for dust and contaminants to keep out of the paint job you can see how we're doing it we're gonna do the same thing over here over on this side we have yet to do the door jam but we're going to follow that same exact technique as we did on the driver side over here on the back you can see all of our painted parts are all going to be covered with white masking paper the white in the smart brand and most brands is the thin paint uh, paper that's the one that's going to allow you to cut and not dole up the razor 
Typically the green or the brown is for bodywork. And with the passenger side all done, we can now close the hood and get that paper to paper contact so we have a nice clean finish around this area. Whenever I paint something, I always like to leave the hood up just a little bit and not in a complete closed position because sometimes that creates too much pressure on the foam tape. And if you don't treat this foam tape properly, what can happen is it can engage too much with the paint surface. And what happens is you'll get crusty paint on the edges. So what I like to do is just have it tamper over the top of it. And usually that does the trick. Over here on the passenger side door jam, same exact thing. You can see we've masked up all the areas that we want to and ran our fine line. You wanna run your fine line last so you can pull it off first. And we have all of our jams completely taped up. And this is the back masking that we were talking about on the driver's side. You can see how it's stuck on pretty much upside down or backwards. And once we close the door here, what happens is then we can tape on top of it with our masking paper and get a nice clean seal all the way through. We'll run one piece of paper on this whole complete side and then the other side as well. Now here we're using 18 inch paper. Now you're gonna find that we're using paper more rather than using the plastic because this is a full paint job. And it's gonna help you out also if you get a masking tree. This masking tree stand is really gonna help with the paper to get a piece of tape on it and just help things move a lot quicker. You can see we're using a combination of six inch, 18 inch and 36 inch white paper and the white paper is much thinner and it's perfect for painting and when you go to cut it like we said earlier it does not dull that blade and it cuts nice and clean so we want to make sure that everything is completely tight so after we put down that masking paper then we'll come along with our masking tape we're just finishing up here the masking on the car we decided to go with paper all around just a little bit easier when you're doing an all over because there's so much tape and you don't have to worry about the uh, plastic sticking and trying to pull it over and the plastic ripping. We're gonna be finishing things up here with our pre-painting prep, getting everything clean. We're using the microfiber paper towels, which are really good because they're really absorbent and you can get a few uses out of them, whether you wash them or throw them away. We'll use a pre-painting prep on the whole vehicle and then we're ready to start spraying. A couple things and I wanted to mention about spraying this color. This color is almost pretty much like a candy. And the best way in my opinion, doing a typical job like this, is to spray the whole entire car through with everything on the vehicle. You know, there's a lot of different variables and components that go into getting the color to match. And when you're spraying it separately, it can be done, but it just adds another element that you know, the possibility of it not matching. And we don't want that. So by doing the cut-in, we pretty much have given no chance to failure as far as the color not matching with the, with the ground coat, with the base coat, the top coat. We want to ensure a uniform color all the way through. You know, sometimes on a particular color like this, it might be hard to get nice and even. And sometimes if we're doing those parts apart, we might be able to get a fender even but then we might not be able to get a door even and we end up putting more coats on that door to get it even. And guess what? When we go to put it back on the car, it doesn't match. So visually here, we can see what's happening. Now, in a true do-it-yourself fashion, do fashion, I'm not gonna seal this. I actually probably wouldn't even seal it in a professional fashion because here's why. The sealer is gonna add a little bit more, let's say, dirt to the paint. Everything's primed. Any cut through you see, it's to primer. So we're gonna be using our ground coat. Now ground coat's base coat, so it's not gonna be as thick, it's gonna dry quicker. One thing is for sure on this car, you need to have a ground coat before you put the base coat down. If you don't, it's never gonna be even. The ground coat is black, let's go mix it up right now. So that's the ground coat we were talking about. Now, this particular paint, it's gonna come mixed for you already. But for me in my situation, I talked to Eastwood, and they sent a little bit more paint to me, so I'm gonna be mixing in the reducer one-to-one. -one. So this is ground coat, base coat. It's not a 2K sealer or anything. Remember we used the sealer on the actual uh, 
door jams, but we're not doing that here, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll add our reducer to that. And then we're one to one, so pretty much this is gonna be a full cup. And what the reducer does, it's gonna help the paint get to the panel. And then it's pretty much the solvents are gonna come out of the paint and it's gonna smooth out. So it might go on wet, it might go on ugly, but once it dries, it's gonna look beautiful. Let's apply it right now. Step six, the paint application. And right after the vehicle is clean, you're gonna to wanna to go over it with a tack cloth. A tack cloth is gonna pick up any last minute debris. And also a special help to Mario. Mario came in and helped us out. If you guys don't know, I've been working with Mario for quite a few years now. He's got his own YouTube channel, Mario King Sarah. Class. What do you think about this project? It's like something we've never done before. 46V, we've never painted this color. Uh, this is exciting, you know, to do a color change is much more exciting than just painting the same boring color. So thanks to Brian for having me here on Paint Society. It's gonna be me, guys. We're doing something kind of cool. On one of my last videos with Pedro, we actually painted the car together with two different hoses. Uh, so that's really gonna help us out. And then the reason why is keeping that wet edge. You know, it's so difficult to paint a vehicle, uh, one person and kind of keep jumping all around to keep it in one nice, clean um, paint job. But we're gonna help eliminate that by starting at the top and moving down, uh, down both sides. And we're gonna see how it works out we're ready to spray that black right now, so let's jump right into it. And getting that ground coat on, I'm starting on my side, and then Mario picks it up on his side. By no means necessary, though, do you ever need two painters to paint a car. But this is a collaboration, and it really did help keep that wet edge. And what is that wet edge, basically? Well, at the edge of your pattern, it's going to be wet. Like in the middle of the hood here, it's starting to have that wet edge. And if I have to jump around somewhere else, that edge is going to dry. So by having this little bit of extra help, our wet edges will connect here in the middle of the hood and we won't have to worry about any dry edge. Now, this isn't really as important as it is when you're clear coating because you want your clear coat to be like one big run. But your base coat is also important too if you're spraying a metallic finish because you want your metallic to land on something smooth and not dry. Now, if I was painting this by myself, I would probably start at the bottom and work my way all the way completely over. Now, some people might say start at the top, but that's gonna be difficult to keep a wet edge. So by starting, let's say, at the driver's side bottom, basically what you're gonna do is work that wet edge from the bottom to the top and back down the passenger side. Stuff covered in one coat, I'm really surprised. Now, let's go ahead and let it flash. Let's give it a good 25 minutes. It's gonna look all kind of matte, and then we're ready to uh, spray that base coat. The black is all flashed off. Now we're gonna go ahead and get that beautiful 46V base coat all mixed up. Again, for us, it's one-to-one, -one, but for you guys, if you get the OEM select paint, it's gonna come already ready to go. You won't even need to reduce it like we are doing here. And here's what it should look like, completely flashed off, almost like a matte satin finish. This is a good indication that you are ready for the next coat. So if you didn't give it enough time and it doesn't look like this, give it a little bit more time. This is a long paint job, a lot of coats. Let's get rolling with that base coat right now. And just a reminder that this is a factory color, an OEM color that comes on Mazdas. And we chose it because of the way it looks in different lightings and how fine and crisp the metallic pearl is. So here we're gonna be doing our application and we're both actually using our Segola spray guns. I'm using the uh, 4600 and so is my partner Mario. We have slightly different air caps we're running but we're getting the same finish. Now what I like to do is try my best to walk a panel when using this type of color and that's really going to help keep everything as even as possible. I'm running in around 80% overlap but what I'm really doing guys is I'm watching the paint and I'm adjusting. If it's not covering enough then I'll increase my overlap and then vice versa. Guys first coat down. The worst thing you can do with this situation is try to jump into another coat. Let this flash. It's already starting to flash. Now we actually come in at night. Uh, we came in around after 4 p.m. to start spraying. It's about 5, 6 p.m. now. Temperature's gotta be around 78, 79 degrees. It's really helping us out because the paint's gonna go on smooth and we're not gonna really have any model issues because of that. So check it out. Mario's got his side done. 
and being able to spray two people at one time, it just makes the paint job so much better, so much smoother, because the dots are all connected. All right? It's looking pretty good. After about 15 to 20 minutes, you can apply your second coat of paint. And you can apply it just the same way you applied your first coat. Now, anywhere in between coats when it's dry, you can use the assistance of a hand pad and K600. I'll put this in the description. And basically, if you have any areas that need a light scuff, let's say there's a piece of dirt or something that just looks a little bit funky, you can come over here and do it. Now, if you don't seal, sometimes where your cut in is and the clear, it will look a little bit weird when the base goes to cover it if you didn't get it perfectly sanded. So those areas, once it's dry, just go ahead and give it a quick little K600. And you can go over again with the tack rag just to pick up any debris over those areas. If you're really having a dirty paint job, you can do this to the whole car, but make sure it's perfectly dry. You always need to apply at least one full coat of base after you do this, if not two, to make sure that your, uh, your paint is covered properly. For our application, we put up to four coats of base to get the proper coverage and make sure there wasn't any striping. One thing you're gonna wanna do after that fourth coat when you figured out that it looks completely covered is get yourself like in the sunlight. Uh, you can get this online, I'll leave it in the description. They're pretty cheap and it's cheap insurance. I'm checking the car, I'm making sure that uh, there's no areas that look modeled. I gotta say, this paint laid down pretty good. Four coats, a little excessive, but that's what it took to get it right and to make sure that we had proper coverage and we didn't really have to go over anything else to give it a better look. We didn't have to sand it down and, and start again. So I'm happy with that. But reds do take a while to cover and we wanted to make sure we had pool coverage and that's just what we have here. So let's go ahead, let's mix up that red tint, that bloody red top coat that's gonna give it that beautiful candy appearance. And then from there, we'll go ahead and clear coat it. But I'm liking the way that this looks so far. Right before we put that mid coat on, I wanna show you guys this paint suit I'm gonna put on. It's a collab paint suit. It's a collab between uh, Paint Society and Collab. This is a very lightweight suit, very good. I'm gonna show you exactly what we've got here because you can get your own too. They're available on Amazon. I'll put them in a link. But I really think it's cool because it's got our logo. This is our community logo. And this logo means everything because don't overthink it, it's just paint. That's what I've been trying to preach to you guys. It really does help out when you're in a thick of things. Now on the front side, you'll have the logo. That's the Paint Society logo. Now mine says Brian, yours will actually say Paint Society. So go ahead and check out the link. It comes in the full suit and the lab coat as well that you saw me before. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this on and then pop on that red transparent candy. Let's go. Candy apple jeans, fruit, fruit. Is that how it goes? I took the harder side. This side has a gas cap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start on mine, and then you can pick it up. Hold on, let me uh, let me get halfway. All right, there we go. I got the whole hood, okay?
All right. One more coat. I'm gonna... So we got the whole car in two coats really quick with the, uh, the top coat. For this, you can go back to back and uh, that's all we're gonna do. I'm happy with the color. Let's give this 25 minutes to flash and then we're gonna clear coat it. You guys ready? Let's do it. And we have our four to one show car clear all mixed up and we're gonna end up putting three coats on and we're gonna put about 10 to 15 minutes between that first and second coat and then we're gonna extend it about 20 to 30 minutes between the second and third. The reason being is we really want to build up that film thickness because we do have a lot of layers of paint. So we're going to be using still our Segolas. We make sure that every time we're done after a coat, we completely break it down. We would hate for any of the paint from the prior coats to land in the clear coat finish. Now, if you are a do-it-yourselfer, you do not need more than one gun. You can simply just clean it out. Now, a lot of the guns on the market they do come with different air caps, just like the Segola, you know, the Iwatas, the Davilibus. They all come with different air caps that you can use for, let's say, base and clear. If I'm just being honest, as a painter, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, just run one air cap. You're not going to notice enough of a difference as if you were spraying every single day. Your first coat, you just want to get that paint on there. Connect the dots is what I like to say medium wet you don't want to put it on too wet because you could have some runs running right off of that base coat allow that let's say 10 to 15 to 20 minutes between that first and second coat to really really tack up and then that creates like a glue barrier for that second coat to really land on and then eventually that third coat so let's take a closer look three coats is gonna look good we knocked down the first coat come over here Pretty clean on video, right? Right. There's a couple in the in the hood. It's a little bit dry because it's trying to cover up all that paint, right? Don't worry about it. Don't try to get it all beautiful. Second, maybe even three coats. We'll see. But we're gonna give about 10, 15 minutes between this and the second coat. This is beautiful. Really loving it. Let's let it cure for a little bit, and then we'll hit it up with the second coat, make it even more shiny. With your second coat, you can slow it down just a little bit and apply more paint because now the body of the car is going to be able to hold it and sustain it a little bit better. So second coat, you can lay it on a little bit heavier. So this is the third coat. We've given an additional time after that second coat. This third coat, we're putting it on only three coats this time because there's so many layers of paint we need to cover. It's looking really good now. Take a look at it. But after this, slick as anything. Let's start laying on the third coat. I would also advise three coats for anyone spraying in their garage because you're going to have a lot of wet sanding and buffing. Now, most uh, clear coats will say two to three coats until film buildness is reached. And for you guys in your garage, and even for us with all these layers of paint, three coats is what we chose to go with. And the reason being is because you're going to remove some of that clear when it comes to sanding. Now, this particular job really came out nice, so we will not be leveling the whole entire car because it is pretty smooth as is, but it is because that third coat went on that it smoothed things out and did not have to get into the blocking of the clear and buffing it. So instead, what we will have to do with this vehicle is just going around to the little pieces of dirt and spot nibbing them out, sanding them and buffing them rather than having to sand down a whole vehicle and polish it is a huge undertaking. My word of advice to you all, especially if you're in your garage and it comes out really dirty, you can use a technique of flow coating, basically just sanding it down with P600, making sure not to burn through and recoating it with clear. Barely, yeah. It'll 
flow, it's right there. It's not a big deal. Could have been worse. <laughs> the hose hit the, the paint job. The very last moment of the paint job. Mr. Mr. Uh, what's the theory? If it can happen, if it will happen. <laughs> wow. We did it. We did it. Now you guys want to know when did we take the, the tape off? I don't have anything really that's going to bridge here because we removed all the windows. Let it dry overnight. The fine line's fine. We'll take it off the next day. This looks beautiful. Wow. This looks good. Now in the case of this particular vehicle, there wasn't really any tape bridging with the clear coat, but I understand that most of my do-it-yourselfers in the garage aren't gonna remove the windows and everything it takes to get a perfect spray job. So if you have tape that is really close to a molding, then go ahead and remove that about 30 minutes after you sprayed your last coat of clear coat. And what works best is if you were just to take that tape and line it at the edge of the molding as your last piece of tape when you go to mask the car. So you can just pull off that tape instead of having to pull back all the masking. Here we're back the next day and we can unmask it with no problem. And then go into the door jams, we can see clearly we have a beautiful transition since I was able to kind of sneak that fine line into that little groove there. You cannot tell at all that this was Paint it at two different times. The color match, the finish, everything is perfect. There's no overspray. So I really hope that you guys learned a lot from this complete car guide, color change guide. There's a lot of great information. Make sure you watch this many times. There's a lot of great information that you will pick up from watching it more than once. I'm gonna leave you with the unmasking and pulling this vehicle out of the paint booth and looking at some final shots of the car partially back together. Hey guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint.